In this webinar, we shall learn about legal issues and follow up pertaining to retinopathy of prematurity. The objectives would be to know about the legal issues that can arise and also to know how to prevent these legal problems and learn about importance of follow up. The legal issues that could arise could be due to poor communication with the parents, poor documentation of the screening and treatment, complications arising out of procedures and lack of follow up. Let us look at proper communication first. The need and timing of ROP screening must be communicated to the parents by the doctor, the pediatrician or the neonatologist, the nurse and the ophthalmologist. The timing should be explained in the parents language in easy understandable terms and their understanding should also be checked because it is very important that the first screening should be done at the right time. They should be also provided with a parent information leaflet in the language known to them. Phone call reminders and linking with the local doctor and health workers are also important steps to improve follow up rates. This important community linking produce compliance of the parents and they will bring the babies for screening and follow up. The next we will talk about the consent form. A consent form before any procedure especially laser or surgery should include the details of the nature of the disease, the possible side effects of the procedure and complications of the treatment. They should talk about the outcome of either laser treatment or surgical management. It should be prepared in at least two languages again simple and understandable terms. The same must be communicated verbally to the parents. Parents who can read the consent form should read it and understand it. They should sign. We should check their understanding of not only the procedure, the disease nature and the possible complications thoroughly before we subject the babies for surgery because the outcome of laser treatment and surgical management cannot be predicted. Now, we will talk about proper documentation. So, the discharge summary usually is in English, but it should contain the findings of the first screening, the date and the place for follow up. If first screening has to be done after discharge, that date and the place for first screening also should be mentioned in the local language or in the language understood by the parents. Advice regarding retinopathy of prematurity screening preferably should be done in the local language. The case record that is the case sheet of the baby must also contain the details of the screening and the treatment given as shown in the figure. There should be multiple checklists and systems which we should have so that this is thoroughly checked by the health personnel of the SNCO or NICUs so that each person is assigned their own role and responsibility. So, especially the roles and responsibility would include screening lineless that means the number of children who have to be screened, what is the time at which they have to be screened, when was the screening done and when they should come for follow. So, these are the important areas which should be given responsibility to all the health workers in the SNCU, especially this responsibility lies with the doctor, the follow up nurse and the ophthalmologist and optometrist in the RBSK scheme. Follow up examination should be individualized because it depends on the nature of the disease, the severity of the disease for the particular child, the treatment the child has received, follow up findings which may show regression or progression. So, it should be very individualized depending on all these above mentioned 
factors. It is absolutely necessary that the neonate should undergo serial examinations till the retina is fully mature. It is not enough that the child undergoes only the first screening. These babies even after complete vascularization of the retina need continued follow up in childhood for assessment of vision especially the visual acuity and for squint. They may go for high refractory errors especially myopia or astigmatism and so they need follow up every 6 months in the first year and from then onwards annually at least up to 5 years of age. For implementation of screening program and follow up program, we need a good support system in the SNCU and in the community. The support system should include the SNCU team and the RBSKA team, the pediatrician, the follow up nurse, the ophthalmologist and the optometrist and the data entry operator because each one have assigned roles, the pediatrician to make the baby undergo screening, the nurse to see that follow up is done and the data entry operator to see that everything is documented properly along with the doctor and the nurse. The trained ophthalmologist is very, very essential because at all SNCUs we need screening facility. So, it is important that the ophthalmologist at the district level undergoes training to specially look at the ROP. At the community level, if you look at the persons who would be part of the support system are ANMs, ASHAs and Anganwadi workers. They will link the parents to the SNCUs by the follow up system of the SNCU which will send SMS to the parents to come for follow up or treatment as the case may be. And also at least some of the SNCUs in the state should have treatment facility that is laser therapy. Availability of early access to treatment is very, very important because timely management is the one key factor which will prevent ongoing blindness. The key messages of this webinar would be screening for a ROP has to be done at the right time to prevent progression to severe forms. So, all the pediatricians should know the time at which screening has to be done and multiple levels of checks and parent education will ensure follow up thus avoiding complications and legal issues. Linking with various health functionaries is very crucial for the success of the ROP program. Arranging transport and logistics is very, very important for follow up and success of this program. Thank you.